Hey there, Hawkers. What a game of footy that was. It's crazy how much can change in just a week. Seven days ago, I was depressed and was probably the most disappointed I had ever been for this club. But fast forward, and I could not be prouder of the response from the boys. There were so many positives all over the field and so many stories coming out of our round eight clash against the Doggies. Let's dive straight into the review and see how we won this game of footy. In the first quarter, the Dogs got off to a really hot start. They won the first three clearances of the game in rapid-fire fashion and kicked three early goals after only a few minutes of footy, and we continued our season's theme of starting off games horribly. We just couldn't get our hands on the footy at all, and the Dogs punished our poor stoppage work. After this, though, there was a huge shift in the momentum. Our mids were starting to get a lot more physical at the contest, and we started smashing them in the contested possession count and ground ball gets, and this simply led to more opportunities in front of goal. Uh, the Dogs' defense looked pretty vulnerable at ground level, and we were doing a really good job at pressuring their dangerous ball users out of defense. Gunston and Meek kicked really important goals, and later in the quarter, the debutant Cal Shadir kicked his first goal in AFL footy. It was so emotional, and it was great to see a goal that meant more than just footy. Uh, there was a scary moment where our skipper went off the ground with a dislocated shoulder, but he came back on the ground at quarter time, and to his delight, we had come back and made this game competitive again. The second quarter was a dominant one for us. We really started to get our uncontested mark game going. Uh, we obviously know that the Dogs have a far superior midfield to ours, and that showed if you look at the clearance count for the match, but we did a really good job at getting the ball out of congestion and cutting up the Dogs with precision passing. We were able to feast off of their poor disposal uh, out of their defense, and we were able to transition really easily from ours. We generated 11 midfield chains up to that point, resulting in us scoring from 5 out of our 10 inside 50s from the, for the quarter. We were dominating around the ground, but we didn't really pile any uh, sort of scoreboard pressure to show for it, resulting in us going into the main break with a slender lead of just eight points. We started off the third quarter hot. Uh, the boys came out of the race hungry for the win. Uh, we were playing the toughest and most desperate footy I've seen from this team in a long time, and our experienced midfielders lead the, led the way uh, with Nash and Warple both producing big opportunities from desperate tackling, which led to scoring opportunities. One really big positive coming out of that game was uh, that Meek was dominating English in the ruck as well. He was genuinely smashing him in the hitouts and hitouts to advantage. This guy is just reviving his career like no other at the moment and is clearly the better ruck choice over Ned Reeves. He is actually top eight for hitouts to advantage percentage in the comp, believe it or not. And it was clear that he was trying his hardest to get out mid's first use of the footy. Uh, which we were able to do for the most part, but we were really struggling with our follow-up possessions. There were a lot of times where we would lose the ball too easily, uh, leading to uh, easy Bulldogs clearances, and this is what kept them in the game. Bontempelli and English capped off the goals for the third term, and we went into the final break leading by just eight points yet again. That last quarter was just all over the place. I think everyone kind of got the vibe that this would go down to the wire, and that it did. Dylan Moore opened up the scoring with a terrific transition goal from our defensive 50, uh, but the Dogs had an instant reply, and surprise, surprise, they were both from the result of an easy clearance going the Dogs' way. With the game under serious threat, the boys responded yet again, continuing the theme of scoring off turnovers, and c and Kalsha kicked two very important goals and seemingly put the game to bed, but another twist was in stall, and English, Darcy, and Williams gave them the lead, and I was genuinely gutted after this. It seemed like the dogs had all the momentum, and we would end up losing this game somehow, like young teams often do if they do have the momentum for the first three quarters. But nope. Somehow we fought back and Sicily put us back in front with a great mark inside 50. Nick Watson made a huge blunder by missing an easy shot that he could have just walked in uh, to put the game to bed. Uh, I guess the pressure just got to him in that instance, but the lad redeemed himself with a huge two-on-one win on the half-forward flank against two much taller defenders and then followed it up by chasing down Liam Jones with an inspirational tackle that led to another scoring opportunity, so I'd say he redeemed himself. Another nail was put through the heart of Hawks fans with a second fourth quarter goal to Bailey Williams, uh, but the boys just locked down the dogs after that. They kept the ball in close, got their knees dirty, and did what had to be done to get us over the line, final score being 98 to 91. There were so many positives coming out of this game. We looked genuinely so much worse on paper in every part of the field. We were undersized in defense against three giants in Norton, Eugle Hagen, and Darcy, and obviously not to mention Tim English, but Frost, Scrimshaw, and Weddle all played exceptional intercept games. 
Uh, this was the theme all over the ground, though. Our pressure and defensive zone gave the Doggies no way out of their back 50. We had so many scoring opportunities from turnover, and if Gunston converted more of his opportunities, we probably would have won this game by a more comfortable margin. Our midfielders did their best against Bont and Libba. They were able to beat that midfield in ground ball gets and contested possessions and just looked a lot hungrier around the ball. Our ball use out of the center was a little bit concerning though. It did seem like if we did get first use of the pill, they were able to easily get back possession and dump it inside 50. Kalshadir, Gunston, and later in the match, Sicily uh, presented well against formidable opponents in Liam Jones and Buku Kamis, who are both terrific intercept players. Uh, once Kalsha builds some meat on those bones, I feel like we could have a real X-Factor player on our hands. Uh, he's going to become a serious marking threat up forward alongside Mitch Lewis. I think what made me the happiest about this game, though, is that we showed real character, and when the game was on the line, with all the pressure riding on their backs, this young team found a way to wrestle back goals whenever the dogs were looking dangerous, and wins like this build so much confidence in young players. When the game was in the balance in those last couple of minutes, every player on the field put all their effort into maintaining our defensive structure and denying the dogs the corridor, which we know they love to use. I could not be prouder of the boys, but enough glazing, we have some votes to get through. There were a lot of underrated performance in this win, and some players were stiff to miss out on the one vote. Special mention to C-Mac, Gunston, Sicily, Scrimshaw, Deer, and Hardwick. They all provided clutch moments and played their role to perfection, and I guess that kind of just goes with everyone on the ground as well. I think Dylan Moore just edges out these players, though. He continued his rich vein of form with 24 disposals, 5 tackles, 9 score involvements, and kicked a pretty nice goal. Two votes will go to Lloyd Meek. This guy is genuinely an anomaly. He has gone from uh, on the cusp of a delisting to now one of the most consistent ruckmen in the league and is cementing himself as one of the top eight rucks in the comp. He's had to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Brody Grundy, whom he held his own against, mind you, and now completely dominated arguably the best in the business in Tim English. He finished with 45 hitouts, 16 disposals, he kicked a really important goal, and he displayed his desperation to keep English quiet with six tackles. Jarman Impey had potentially his best game in the brown and gold. This guy is so versatile for a defender. He does such a good job of shutting down his direct opponent and intercepting the ball, but he's also such a key part in our scoring chains from our back half. He's just a great kick and can run all day. He's a terrific leader back there as well, especially with the absence of Sicily for extended parts of the game and is more than deserving of the three votes. He finished the game with 27 disposals at 93% efficiency. He took 12 marks, had seven intercept possessions, but also showed his willingness to get down and dirty in those back 50 stoppages with eight contested possessions. To recap the votes tally, Jarman Impey gets his first nod on the leaderboard and slots into equal fifth with a number of other players. Same with Miki, finally gets on the board after a good month of form and catches up to Scrimshaw and Chol. Dylan Moore widens the gap a tad at the top of the ladder with his one vote and is now two in front of second place James Warple, who has been a little bit under par since his All-Australian level start to the season. Anyway, that's all from me, Hawkers. We will have another tough game against the Saints down in Tassie this Saturday, Arvo. Part of me wants to feel confident after beating a better team in the Western Bulldogs, uh, but we need to expect ups and downs from our team, so uh, I think we all need to go into this game with a fairly conservative mindset. We also don't have much of a break this week compared to other teams, and I do suspect Sicily will be managed after being banged up all game. We'll see though. Get keen for the preview video out Wednesday, and peace out, Hawkers.